Egypt. Now, the book of Genesis uh, ends with uh, Jacob going down to Egypt with his family. Uh, and in the first chapter of Exodus, uh, Jacob's clan has grown into a large group of people uh, that have been enslaved by the pharaohs. Uh, the pharaohs, of course, are the god kings of Egypt. Uh, and the uh, Jews end up being oppressed uh, for hundreds of years. Uh, the Hebrews suffer and suffer until Moses, uh, from the tribe of Levi, uh, who is brought up in Pharaoh's household, leads them in the name of God to freedom. Uh, the God of Moses is an omnipotent deity uh, that was unknown to the Hebrews in Egypt prior to their liberation. Uh, the Exodus narrative and its historical validity uh, remains uh, somewhat controversial, uh, and some scholars and historians well, debate the biblical text's lack of historical evidence, while others ask themselves, uh, wh why would uh, a nation choose to fabricate or invent for itself a history of slavery as the explanation for its origins? Uh, the simple fact is that uh, slavery played a major role in the very structure of the massive Egyptian uh, state. Uh, Egypt, uh, Mishrayim in Hebrew, uh, was a vast empire, uh, as well as the granary of the ancient Near East, uh, especially in the times of famine. You have examples of this in uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 57. Uh, the superpower of Egypt was a theocratic government uh, with the pharaohs uh, as uh, semi-divine beings, god kings, uh, as I mentioned, considered to be semi-divine, uh, and the inter, uh, well, intermediary uh, between God, the gods uh, and humanity. Uh, and the land of the Nile had many temples and many gods. Uh, and yet, uh, monotheism, or single god worship, was actually introduced in Egypt by the pharaoh Akhenaten. Uh, this is around 1350 BC, uh, and uh, may have actually been the source uh, for Jewish monotheism. Uh, we don't know. It's uh, really uh, uh, up in the air. Now, during the reign of Ramses II, uh, which is around 1279 to 1212 BC, he reigned uh, a very long time. Uh, Egypt was involved in costly wars uh, and vast building projects. Uh, so it's possible uh, that the era of cruel oppression uh, described in the book of Exodus, coincides with the time of Ramses the Great. Now, the Bible itself does not provide concrete details uh, uh, t you know, to date the events uh, accurately or securely, uh, and uh, names none of the pharaohs that Joseph, uh, the sons of Israel, Aaron, and Moses dealt with. Uh, Egyptian records from the period, uh, well... Uh, remain virtually silent about the events described in the later chapters of Genesis and the first half of Exodus. Uh, there is no written mention of Joseph, Moses, the Hebrews, the Ten Plagues, or the catastrophic defeat of the Egyptians uh, that is known to exist. Uh, what we do have uh, is the biblical narrative, uh, the narrative of the Exodus, essentially the national epic of ancient Israel, uh, telling from Moses and the escape from bondage uh, to the wanderings in the wilderness uh, to the time of Joshua and the conquest of the land of Canaan. Uh, in the Bible, uh, there is more space devoted uh, to the generation of Moses than any other period in Israel's history. Uh, and the event of the Exodus becomes a model for subsequent experiences of liberation uh, in the biblical uh, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim traditions. Uh, so the book of Exodus has a vast, vast influence. Now, Egyptian sources mention the Hebrews and or Israel only once. Uh, the little-known king uh, Mernefet, uh, Stella, or Pillar Inscription. This is around 1207 B.C. Uh, an inscription that implies uh, that an entity named Israel indeed existed in Cana, uh, and therefore uh, the Hebrew migration must have taken place before the end of the 13th century B.C. Now, historians and scholars, uh, well, ask how it is possible for a vast migration to have left no trace in Egyptian sources. 
Uh, the biblical narrative is, of course, a sacred story, uh, a sacred story full of embellishment, uh, heightening, exaggeration, uh, and, of course, mythology. Uh, the sacred story of Exodus is full of contradictions. Uh, for example, uh, in the topography uh, involved, the areas involved, and the sequence of events. Uh, this is a feature typical of folk tales, not of historical texts. So it may be possible that the Israelites left Egypt in a series of waves. Uh, by the time of the second or third wave, uh, the first group uh, of Hebrews was already settled in the land of Cana. Uh, for example, Shechem in Samaria. Uh, they slowly infiltrate the region and form a nation. Uh, it is also possible that a constant flow of thousands upon thousands left Egypt and roamed the desert. Uh, the simple fact is that we just don't know for sure. Uh, and it's all a question of faith uh, or individual belief. Uh, what we do know for sure, and is, uh, well, a matter of the historical record, is the fact that for more than 500 years, uh, numerous Jewish uh, communities lived in the land of the Nile. Uh, the first traces are, of course, lost in the dim past, the uh, sands of time, uh, when the pharaohs of the Middle Kingdom ruled Egypt, uh, which is mentioned uh, sporadically uh, in the Bible. Uh, for example, uh, Jeroboam, the warrior of the people, fled to Egypt and remained until the death of King Solomon, uh, his father, uh, then becomes king of the north, the northern kingdom, Israel. Uh, the southern kingdom it was Judah. Uh, this happens after Solomon's death. Uh, the Jewish kingdom splits into two. Now, the Bible also mentions uh, Pharaoh Necho uh, and his victory over King Josiah on the plain of uh, Megiddo. Uh, and the god king of Egypt takes, uh, well, many Jewish prisoners back to the land of the Nile. Uh, the biblical narrative also mentions the uh, prophet Jeremiah, who flees with hordes of refugees into Egypt after the uh, Assyrians destroy the uh, Solomonic Temple uh, and the holy city of Jerusalem. Uh, the historical or archaeological record also verifies a Jewish uh, presence in the land of the Nile, uh, one that lasted for, well, centuries, uh, an elite Jewish mercenary unit on the island of Elephantine. Uh, they guarded Egypt's southern border and established rural settlements and even built, uh, well, build their own temple. Uh, they built their own temple in Egypt so they could uh, celebrate traditional uh, Hebrew festivals. Uh, these Jews in Egypt established the reputation for being brave soldiers, uh, good farmers and cattle breeders, as well as artisans and craftsmen. Uh, they stay in contact with Jerusalem uh, and, uh, well, Serve, uh, we have some surviving papyrus that were found around 1905 that testifies to this fact. So we know it's a historical fact. There's no debate about this. Uh, the biblical narrative also verifies this. A passage in Isaiah. This is chapter 19, verses 18 through 19. Uh, it's, uh, let me quote this I'm by memory now. In that day uh, shall there be an altar uh, to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Uh, so there can be a little doubt about the Jewish presence in the land of the Nile. Uh, it is a historical fact, folks. But the central event of Moses, the mediator of divine instructions, uh, and the Exodus remains something of, uh, well, a historical mystery. Uh, and yet, the formative period of the Exodus is nothing less than the origins of or starting point for, well, <laughs> the Jewish legal, ritual, and material institutions. Uh, a historizing uh, happens in the treatment of the Exodus uh, and the Passover celebration, uh, which was originally two separate springtime feasts, uh, well, 
are over time given a historical connection to the Exodus. Uh, the Festival of Unleavened Bread. Uh, this is originally uh, an agrarian uh, pilgrimage feast celebrating the first springtime harvest of barley and wheat, uh, which was offered to God uh, without being contaminated, i.e. leaven, uh, no putrefaction or mold, etc. Uh, in Exodus, the reason uh, for the unleavened bread is explained by the need for haste. Uh, they have to leave in a, a very quickly. The Hebrews have to flee Egypt really fast. Uh, we have examples of this need for speed in the biblical narrative. For example, uh, Exodus chapter 12, uh, verses 34 through 39, uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 16, verse 3, and Isaiah chapter 52, verse 12. Uh, so the Bible uh, tells of this fact several times. Uh, then we have the uh, slaughter of the firstborn lamb, uh, the paschal lamb, originally an offering by patriarchs to God, uh, who they